there was a person who came to Imam Jafar Sadiq Allah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa He said that Imam, you know, and he was like from a tribe of wise people and he was a wise person himself, known for his knowledge. He said, uh, I want to ask you, what is greatness in your view? He asked the Imam. The Imam, he told him, before I answer that, you tell me what is greatness in your eyes. What do you think greatness is? He says, uh, well, you know, in our view, a person is great, right? In tawati'ina shakarna, wa in muna'na sabarna. He says, a person's greatness is known by the fact that when Allah gives him, then they are thankful for it. And when Allah does not give them, then they are patient. See, a sublime thought, you know, that when Allah gives us, then we should be thankful. And if he doesn't give us, we shouldn't complain, we should be patient. You know, this is what he said to the imam. You know, now, before what the Imam says, let us see what we say. Right? This is what he had said, and that was his view. Now, when we look at our lives, our view is a little bit different than that. I mean, at least what he said is sublime, you know. Well, if Allah gives you, thank Him. If He doesn't give you, be patient. To us, if Allah gives us, we forget Him. If Allah gives us, we forget Him. And if He doesn't give us, we complain to Him. This is our way, right? Okay. That when we don't get something, we're complaining. Allah, you know, I'm a woman. Where is it? I'm doing all these good things. Where is the mind? You know? On one hand, you do this. On the other hand, if Allah does give us, you see, you forget him. That's it. My friends, this is our view. At least his view is better. His view is better that when Allah gives you, thank Allah. Mm -hmm. And when Allah doesn't give you, be patient. Mm -hmm. His view is better. Now listen to the Imam. When he said this sentence, and obviously he felt proud of saying it, that, you know, obviously a sublime thought that when Allah gives you, thank Him for it. When Allah does not give you, be patient on it. When he told that to the Imam, the Imam said, every dog in Medina does that. Every dog in Medina does that. You give a dog something, he'll be thankful. And if you don't give him something, he won't bark at you, he'll be patient. So this is your idea of greatness. That you want to be an animal. That's the job of animals. That when you give them something, they're thankful for it. When you don't give them something, then you know they won't bark at you. They will be patient. They will sit there patiently. They will do sabr. He said, insan is higher than this. Now, the person understood who's the teacher and who's the student. He understood who's the teacher and who's the student. Now he said to the Imam, please tell me, teach me what is greatness now. I understood that all my life what I thought as greatness is what animals are doing. Mm. Now tell me what is greatness. So now the Imam said, greatness in our view is this. That when Allah does not give us, we thank Him. If Allah doesn't give us, we thank Him. If I understand this, Allah doesn't have to give in order for us to thank Him. We thank Him knowing that He's Allah. If Allah gives us, we thank Him. And if He gives us, then we spend it in His way. We give it away in His way. My friends, the difference between insan and animals is that Insan understands that Allah doesn't have to give anything for him to thank him because the same thank that he's going to give, the same praise that he's going to give, the same dua that he's going to make, everything is given by Allah. How much are you going to thank? With what, with what are you going to thank Him? With your tongue, the tongue is given by Allah. With your energy, the energy is given by Allah. With your hands, the hands are given by Allah. 
That's why a mu'min, a insan understands, man understands that no, we thank Allah even though He doesn't give us. If He doesn't want to give us, we thank Him still. We thank Him. This is my friends, the way. And you know what? Allah gave us so, thing, so many things and the greatest thing He has given us, he, the greatest thing that Allah has given us is the opportunity to make dua to Him. Opportunity to make dua to Him. He gave us that opportunity. My friends, this is the greatest thing that Allah has given us. The chance to call Him. Well, let me put it in perspective for you if you send me salawats. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa Ali. Let me put this in the right perspective. My friends, you know, you get on a plane and, you know, uh, you meet someone who's next to you. You become friends with him. And you find out that, you know, he is a CEO of many companies and this is a filthy rich person. And he likes you also. And he says, you know what, I like you. And you know, you're my friend. And here, I'll give you my personal card. Personal card, call me anytime. Anytime you have a problem, call me. I'm there for you, friend. I'm there for you. My friend, imagine this. This guy has wealth. He can come to your help on a rainy day. He'll be there for you in the time of need. And he has given you his personal card with his personal direct line number. How would you keep that card? In the innermost pocket you have, you know. Make sure it doesn't fall anywhere. You know, you have made a connection. You have made a connection. In the times of your need, in the times of your problem, you have made a connection. That's how you will feel. Wow, you know, I'm, you know, I will make use of this card. Why? Because this person gave you the chance to call him. Allah is saying that that person, how much does he owe? I am the master of the heavens and the earth. I have the keys to the treasures of the heavens and the earth. And I am giving you my card. Call me. Call me. My friends, this is what dua is. He has given us the chance to call him. And Allah is saying, call me. And don't worry what time. Call me in the day, call me in the night. I don't mind. I don't mind. I will be there for you at night also. Get up in the night. Anytime you need, call me and I'm there for you. Imagine this. Your friend also won't do that. Let's say you go to, and you can try this. If you want to play a prank on someone, go and try it. Go in the middle of the night to someone's house, 2 a.m. You know, go 2 a.m. in the house, knock on his door, ring his bell. He'd be like, what happened? What happened? <laughs> no, bro, I need a lighter for my cigarette. Can you have a lighter? <laughs> Even if he is your best friend, he'd be like, are you crazy? You're waking me up at 2 a.m. in the night? You broke my sleep? What's wrong with you? He'll get upset at you. He'll be angry with you. And he's your best friend. And Allah is saying, your best friend will get angry if you call him at night. But I am, I am the one that if you call me at night, I will be happy with you. I'll be pleased with you. Imagine this. Who is Allah? I'll be pleased with you if you call me at night. And that too, I'm the one who's giving. You are the one who's taking. <laughs> See, you are sleeping. Allah is awake. He is the one who's giving. You are the one who's sleeping. Do you understand what's going on? My friends, tell me, if you go for a loan to a bank and say, banker, I need a loan, the banker will say, all right, come back tomorrow, I'll make a decision. You know, that night that you need the loan, you're waiting the whole night. Tell me, will you sleep? 